In this raised bed right here, I have beets, a crop that I used to hate eating as a kid and I now love, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to grow it from seed to harvest. Beets are thought to have originated in the Mediterranean and ancient Egyptians, Romans, and Greeks ate them with the Romans apparently being the ones who first thought to cultivate them for that swelling of the root or the beet that we traditionally eat. Now, it's really interesting that beets are used to produce a lot of the world's sugar, sugar beets. Not a variety we're gonna grow in this video, but just an interesting fact. And if you've been having some problems in the bedroom, beets are thought to also be an aphrodisiac, which is why I've been planting them across my entire garden, guys. So I'm gonna show you some amazing varieties to grow. Let's head back to the seedling table and talk seeds. Okay, let's talk beet varieties. In fact, chard and sugar beets are also in the beet family. Chard typically grown for the leaves, sugar beets for that sugar production. We're gonna talk about just beet beets, the normal beets that we're eating for that beetroot. And I have three different sort of categories here, mostly to do with their color. So the first one is going to be your standard red beet or purple beet. A really popular variety here is bull's blood beet. So if you want and love that normal beet flavor and it doesn't taste like dirt to you, then something like this is a really good option. Now, if you wanna get fancy with the colors, I've grown this one many, many times in my garden. This is called a Chiogia beet. So it is a concentric circle variation. You have this pink, white, pink, white, pink, white. So when you cut that beet in half, it looks really, really nice, but it also has the highest amount of what's called geosmin, which is that sort of compound that can make some people think beets taste very dirty or just like plain soil not very appetizing, so if that's you, I might avoid this one. Now we get to my personal favorite category of beets. This one right here is from Botanical Interests and it's called Golden Boy. Great name, I love it. You can also grow Badger Flame Beet from Row 7 Seeds, but all this to say, this is that yellow, orangish, goldish color that has a much more mild dirt flavor. There's, there's not that much of that at all, especially when you harvest it young, and I find that they're much, much sweeter. All of these you can eat raw. I tend to go for the reds or the golds to eat raw, but honestly, I personally love to steam them. We'll get into that a little bit later. So let's now talk about how to plant them because it's a little bit different than your traditional seed. Okay, we have our golden boy beets here, and what's interesting about beets is this looks like a beet seed, right? I have, looks like three of them in my hand. Well, the truth is actually a little bit more complicated. Beets are a compound seed. So if I actually were to cut this in half, you would see, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's more than one seed inside what you thought was the seed. Okay, let's plant these guys out. I've got three different trays here. Beets actually are a great candidate to just direct sow right in the bed that you're planting in. But contrary to popular opinion, or at least some gardeners think you can't transplant them, you definitely can. So I've got a six cell, these are our epic six cell trays. I'm just gonna do six of each variety just to show you. Now you don't have to do this. You could of course just put the seed on top and then put some extra soil on top. But sometimes I just make a little depression here. You're about half inch deep on beet seeds and planting one per hole is totally fine because as I just mentioned, that's more than one in the actual hole because it's a compound seed. So in you go. If you're really paranoid, then you can, you can put more than one in, but I'll just toss one in each of these for now. You're still gonna have about two or three pop up. And when it comes to planting beets, it really is a cool weather crop preferred. So in a warm climate like myself, I can grow it from our spring into our summer, harvesting in that early summertime, and summer cools down, I can start to grow it at that point in time. And then also, right about now, this is you know early fall for us here, I can grow this throughout my winter. Now, if you're in a cold climate, that's not gonna be the case, but just work with your planting calendars and check out some of our videos on that. We've done a couple videos. So in go my beet seeds. I'm gonna store these in a warm area. I really want it above about 65 Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna wait about five to 15 days, and we should see you back then. It has been two weeks since we last looked at our beets and we have a few coming up. In this case, we only had one little seedling come up and of course over here, there are five. Now in some cases, you do what's called thinning out where you actually pick the biggest seedling. For example, in this cell, this one would be the biggest and you would actually remove the rest of these. But in the case of beets, what you can do is something called multi-sowing. So we're gonna let these continue to grow a little crowded and check in when it's closer to transplant. It's been about a week and these beets are ready to transplant. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look. These are the Chiogias and these are the bull's blood beets. And what you'll notice, like we mentioned, because the beet seed is a compound seed, 
you sometimes have more than one popping up. It's actually a big benefit because you can harvest in a really unique way, which you'll see later on. But right now, we need to figure out a good transplant spot, so let's head out to the front yard. Here in the front yard, I think I found the perfect spot in this tall birdies raised bed right here. Just in this little corner, I've got a cleared away area. I used to have some arugula here and some other, other crops, just some leafy greens. But this is a nice little spot. It is full sun, that's what beets want, and they also, can handle some cold, but pre prefer a little bit of a warmer temperature. So, you know, don't put it in the shade or anything like that. Now, we need to talk about soil and soil requirements. Beets really aren't that crazy of a feeding plant, meaning they don't suck up a ton of nutrients out of the soil. What that means is if you have a bed that you've used once or twice, you haven't even added that much fertilizer to it, you can actually plant beets after that and they're not gonna suffer that much. In fact, they might suffer too much if the reverse was true, if there was too much fertility, too many nutrients in the soil in too high a concentration, it can lead to forking and sort of weird looking beets. So you don't want to over fertilize specifically when growing beets. Now, we need to think about spacing. Remember, we just talked about how you can multi-sow these beets. So I'll show you one example of how you might go about planting a multi-sown beet. The thing you must remember when you are transplanting beets. You don't have to direct sow them. We've already established that. You can transplant them very successfully, but you need to make sure you don't damage the taproot. Beets form a taproot. That's actually the thing that you are eating when you're eating the beet. So if you're using something like our Epic 6L trays, it actually makes it really easy because there's a big hole at the bottom and you can pop it out without damaging. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you're not, you want to gently sort of massage whatever tray you're using and you can just get it out that way. So take a look. I've removed it without damaging the seed or the seedling or the root at all. Now what I can do is I can just kind of gently loosen this up. You don't need to go too crazy here, but just gently loosen this up. Now this is two beet seedlings in one, and that's actually totally fine in this case. If you want really long, full, healthy beets, you do want to make sure that this soil is free of any rocky material. It's kind of like growing a carrot. If you throw some rocks down in there and it hits them, that's going to cause some weird misshapen beets. So come in, just separate a little bit of the soil, plop in your seedlings. I call it holding their hair, but you can call it whatever you want. I like to do this. Just hold the seeds, make sure I don't, you know, accidentally bury any of the leaves or anything like that. And boom, I have my first beet seedling, actually my first two in the ground. And now what you'll see later is as this develops, you can actually harvest the smaller one once it gets nice and sizable without damaging the other one and then let that one grow up even larger. So it's a way of getting sort of a twofer in the same spot. But let's plant the rest of these out and talk spacing really quickly. So beets are kind of interesting in that you can eat them literally right now if you wanted to, wouldn't really be getting too much out of it, or you can grow them in such a way that they get very, very large. So if you wanna give yourself the best shot at getting huge beets, I recommend spacing at least five or six inches away. So something like that is a good idea. Now, if you don't care or you're growing baby beets, you could go something like three inches away. Because remember, we just talked about this multi-sowing example. Clearly, you can grow them right next to one another. But again, I kind of want to go for some bigger beets here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go about six inches apart. Our beets are in and there are only two things to think about right now. Number one, give it a quick water. This just helps to settle that soil around the root pretty wet here, so I don't need to give it too much. Just wanna make sure any air pockets are gone. And then as you're caring for these after transplant, you can throw some mulch on. We really like garden straw here at Epic Gardening, but you can use shredded leaves, grass clippings, whatever you want, keep that moisture in. And as these settle in, beets really like even consistent watering. Actually not watering them enough can lead to them cracking, which is not what you want because it kind of ruins the integrity of the beet. So we'll check in with these after they settled in and see how they're doing. It's been about a month now, a little over, and I wanna check on my beets. There's a huge bed of beets here, but the ones that we planted are these red ones right here. And what you're kind of looking for is the size of the leaves sort of indicates the size of the swelled root or the beet root that we actually harvest, but you can't really see it sometimes. So what I like to do just to check on them is I'll just kind of brush the soil away and see if I can get a sense for how big that beet is. Like this is a good example of one that's really leafy and doesn't have a very large bulb. And so it's sort of up to me at this point. I can harvest it for the beet greens and uh, a small bulb, like a little baby beet, or I can let this one be a little bit and kind of feel around on some of these other ones. Beets are one of those crops that 
yeah, they're given a specific date range, like 50 to 75 days or so, but really depends on conditions if you're actually going to get it in that time frame. Sometimes you just have to wait a little bit longer. So on these ones right here, they aren't quite ready yet, but one that is, and you can tell just by, again, feeling for that base, this is sort of a nice like mid-size little baby beet that I could harvest and just give you a sense for it. We've got a little baby beet here. It's not super impressive, but it does sort of count and <laughs> you can still harvest and eat these beet greens, which have actually become one of my favorite greens to eat. But what I want to show you are some backup beets that I planted a little ahead of these ones here. And these are golden beets, which is actually my favorite variety. And this is where you get to see the power of these multi-sown beets or really just not thinning them out. Take a look at this right here. This is the perfect example. I can't even imagine a better one. Look at the way these beets grew. I'm just gonna clear this out so you can see it. See how you have this sort of center right here? This one's going this way, this one's going this way, and this one's going this way. That's because these were planted in a triplet and I never thinned them out. So what you're seeing is as this root starts to swell, it'll of course push against all the other ones and they're still growing into pretty sizable beets. And if you wanna go for size, you harvest the biggest one, what's that gonna do? That's gonna free up these other two to thrive more. That's a really nice looking beet right there. Really solid looking beet. I'm gonna harvest, uh, let's see, probably this guy here, cause it's pretty sizable. This is another multi-sown. So this is one approach. I mean, honestly, you can harvest beets at any size. Like I said, a baby beet actually prized among chefs and here you have one grown in your garden. So take advantage of it if you want to. I'm gonna go for size on these. I mean, these are some honking beets. These are some really quality beets. What I wanna do now is show you how to process them. So I'll take these three and my little baby boy and head on back to the prep station. Storing beets, let's talk about it. It's actually a couple of things that you really have to know here. Number one, taking care of the tops. Two ways to deal with these as far as getting them off the beet. One is simple, just sort of twist it off the top like this. Nothing too fancy, actually very satisfying. The other way is just obviously to take a knife and make a nice clean cut, but you really want to avoid getting into the actual root tissue at all. You want to cut above that point. The reason you need to take them off is because as long as they are connected, they're gonna be drawing nutrients and water out of the beetroot, which is not what you want. You want this to be the nice and juicy thing. Now these, you can eat, and they're actually quite good. They're one of my personal favorite greens. You steam them, you can saute them, kind of cook them like you would cook collards or kale, but to me the flavor is just a little bit stronger, a little bit better. Now, if you're going to use your beets fresh, well then you can go ahead and start washing and processing them. But if you're not, if you're going to store these and use them in a couple days, this is about all you wanna do. Just take off all of this top leaf and stem tissue, leaving that little nub there, and don't do anything else. Store these in the fridge in like a perforated bag or in the crisper drawer at as cold a temperature as possible, but above freezing, obviously. So somewhere in the 35 Fahrenheit range, we'll put Celsius on the screen. You do not want to wash your beet before you store it. It's going to decrease the shelf life. Then when you're ready, you can pop it back out. And I'm actually going to process this one here for you. Come out, you know, cut the tail off. You can cut this top off and there you go. And you know, let's just go ahead and get a cross section. I actually think here, I have what's called a Chiogia beet instead of a golden beet. I forgot I had planted these as backups as well. And this is actually one of the more beautiful pattern beets you're ever going to see. So I'm pretty sure when I do this cross section here, you're going to see these concentric white and purple rings that is going to look quite beautiful. So let's take a look, see if I've done my job right here. I'm gonna come in and there you go. Look at that. Very, very pretty beet and actually quite a delicious one. Mmm, smells good too. One thing I like to do is actually peel my beets, especially if I'm gonna eat them fresh. You can also give them a nice little scrub. And then after that, roasting them has been my favorite way to eat them. But on the Epic Homesteading channel, I just turned them into beet ravioli. So you can check that out. Hope you had a good time learning how to grow beets. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.